Good afternoon. It's afternoon in our house. We just had lunch. We were doing school all morning and um, the weather is absolutely gorgeous. It went from freezing temperatures to low 50s and sunshine. So Jason and his friend were going, they're driving an hour and a half away to borrow a backhoe and bring it back here. And it's at our, uh, some family property that's beautiful there and the kids love to go and explore. So I was like, you know what? Do you mind <laughs> if you bring the van to haul it back and we all come along? Because I think it would be really fun. So we quickly are getting on our boots and grabbing some snacks and some water bottles and Lydia is ready for her nap. So that's perfect timing because she can sleep in the van. Oh, you can't see your arm. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're about to hop in the van right now and get on the road. Before I get too far into this vlog, because I'm going to take you along with us so you can see the property and, and what we do there, and hopefully a very smooth and successful bringing back of a backhoe. Um, back of a back. But before I get too far, I wanted to tell you about today's giveaway. Okay, I had to go get my notes so I could tell you this um, in completeness. This is a really neat giveaway. Um, this one is more geared toward homeschoolers, and so if you want to enter in this giveaway, just let me know in the comments below. Yes, I would like to be entered in this giveaway. This is from Brighter Day Press. This beautiful homeschooling mom named Whitney um, designed a full morning plan um, for morning time, a full plan for morning time. So it is like a complete curriculum guide that will walk you through having a successful morning time in your house. So it's 36 weeks. This is a digital download and it is 36 weeks. So it, would be, it could be for your whole school year. Um, it has a plan to lead your kids through daily Bible reading, devotionals, um, Bible memory work. She has hymn study, art study, composer study, poetry, all bundled into this guide that you get. Um, it's, it's really well done. I've looked through it and I thought some of you would be so blessed by this. So if you want to check out her um, website, I will put the link for that in the description box. Um, she's also on Instagram, so I'll put that link as well. And um, yeah, I would love for one of you to win this giveaway. Thank you, Whitney, for offering this for us. So just leave me a comment below, and we will, in one week, I will randomly choose a winner. He pooped me. <laughs> Are you he excited? Me. Are you excited? Your hair. Are you excited? Yeah. Hey, what did I tell you to do? Are you excited? Where did I tell you to go? In your seat. In your seat. In your seat. I'll show you. Come on, get buckled. I'm excited. Yeah. Watch your boots, buddy. We haven't left yet, but Lydia didn't make it. Here, show this baby, Silas. Sweet baby girl. So the men are working on the back door. Our back door is broken. It won't open, and they just got inspired to try to fix it right now. So we're all broken hanging out. For a long time. It's been broken for a long time. Oh. The unlock button. Can you hit the unlock? Thank you. Right there. It's right there. So we'll see how this goes. We'll see, there they are. But Lydia couldn't couldn't take the fun. She crashed. Fun. <laughs> There's a little piece hanging. There's a piece. That's okay. How's the book? What are you reading? Does Roll of Thunder Hear My Cry. Mm, how is it so far? Do you recommend it to other children? Yeah. Do you have any summaries of what this is about? Um, no, I guess. Nothing? Who's the main character? Um, um, a short boy? No, <laughs> it's not a boy. It's Cassie. Cassie. Whatever. Have, right? Mm-hmm. Cassie, yep. Well, I guess we'll have to wait for the summary until she's done with the book. Yep. She's not, not giving it to us right now. Somebody else didn't make it either. I think Pepper's sleeping. No, you'll have to wait until you're my age to read it. Really? Is it too dramatic for him? Well, it's not really dramatic, but... I don't know. There's a lot of really big words mm -hmm. that he might not know. Is it a um, historical book? 
this one? Yeah. Okay. I was about to say mm -hmm. story. Yeah. It's like if historical. I don't know if the girl is real, but probably not. It's probably historical based on. Mm -hmm, but it's still fiction. Yeah. I think historical fiction. Mm -hmm. Well, enjoy that. Wait one. Wait one. Wait one. That one. How did you guess? I don't know. Lori did it and there was nothing in his hands. Which hand? Which hand? Um, that one and that one. Unfortunately, uh -oh. the way to get it off is... Crap! I keep messing up. <laughs> cabin. Uh, Mom's doing some stuff upstairs in there so I'm taking videos. They're loading up the backhoe if you can hear it. Yeah, let's get a closer view on that if we can. So it's the next morning and we are here without a backhoe. Can you give us a brief like what happened here or why, why were we getting it in the first place? So we were getting it for a couple of reasons. One, um, our our only friend Joe was going to use it to do some work for his driveway that he wants to move and change and whatever. He lives on a pretty severe hill, and um, to have people be able to walk in his front yard or front door and park right there, you know, like elderly or anybody like that, um, he has to re, re completely redo it. And all that. So. Anyway, so that was the uh, main reason. The other one was, you know, we would move some rock and dirt and stuff around here to while we have it here. But um, so we actually got it completely loaded last night. But um, getting there was a chore. I was warned to load it on the top of the hill and. And so I said, oh, okay, great, because the load would be too great for the truck to be able to make it up the hill because there's some loose parts on the road and whatnot. So anyway, um, so when we go to load the backhoe, um, I was on the backhoe driving it up, and Joe was watching to make sure I was you know, not going to uh, no, get off too far to one side. There's Leo and Samuel. We're gonna load this thing onto our neighbor's trailer. And then that's the dually, that's a glass. I didn't chalk the wheels on the trailer and we were on enough hill that when I got on the back of the trailer it lifted up the back of the truck. Now mind you, for anybody that knows anything about vehicles, this is a um, one ton dually so this thing is absolutely heavy and it just picked that truck up in the front of the trailer like it was nothing and as that started happening um, the whole circus started going down the hill with me in the back I'm so, so glad I wasn't watching the, that basically it did one of these things it picked up the truck in the trailer with me on the backhoe right here on the back of the trailer and we're going and I'm of course no one's in the truck no one's in the truck <clears throat> And we're going downhill, and this is a, well, I told you that the hills were scary enough to where um, you wouldn't want to take a big load up it, so you surely don't want to take a big load down it without having any control to steer or stop. So we eventually came to rest in some trees. Um, it really wasn't as bad as it could have been. Um, we did do a little bit of damage to my neighbor's trailer. That really broke my heart. That was the biggest um, negative of of the whole thing. So the kids didn't see this happening either, right? No, they came up after the fact Joe. because I saw Leo. Yeah. 
his video clips are not at all of you loading. So. It's after the fact when he's like, hmm, I don't think this is going to fit <laughs> on that trailer. So long story short, uh, we couldn't get it on the trailer. It, it kind of slid off and we had a hard time getting it off of his, off his, it was kind of tip and stuff. So yeah. Um, what happened as it was going back down, it threw everything for a ride and then so instead of being perfectly on the trailer when we came to rest, I was straddling the wheel well of the trailer, which is pretty beefy, but when you have a backhoe sitting on it, it's not that beefy, so it started bending in and, and so we were hung up and then we tried to figure out how we were going to get it off and had to use the, uh, the outriggers, the little stabilizer bars on the back when you go to dig anybody knows equipment and so um, lifted it up enough to where we then was able to basically pull the trailer out with the truck really really hard and, and four-wheel drive and, and all that stuff so then we were on actually a little bit of a down uh, a decline uh, downhill and so then we got it on fine enough but then realized that um, there's a part to the backhoe where the bucket would lock in place uh, and we couldn't get that to work. I tried a couple different tricks. Um, I could have taken it off and backed it up against a tree and made it work. Didn't want to do that. I was just yeah. It was dark, cold, right. you know, all these things. And um, so basically we get it on the trailer and we realize that it's just... Um, it was too much of a risk because we had lost a tail light uh, going backwards and one of the tail lights didn't work before and so now we're o hanging over an extremely heavy load no tail lights in the dark in the dark out in the country where there's no light right which is f right which would have been fine because we would have followed him you know Joe would have drove and I would have followed him but it was just too much risk and um, I'm actually growing a little bit in, in wisdom. Joe, I would have probably... Okay, okay. Joe kept me in line because I would have probably just powered through and just like, we're this far, we're going to go. Right, you You're, this is hours in. Yeah, it is, it was. It was like half a day. Yeah. But they left it there. Right, we did. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is like, when I was going backwards, there's a couple things I could have done probably that would have made it better. But it was, as you can imagine, it was happening in less than, you know, a second. And um, it's not my equipment as in, like, I right. know it that well. I know how to operate it, but I, it's not, like, fluid, like it's my car or truck or whatever. And so I'm trying to give myself a little bit of a break that I didn't, yeah. that I wasn't able to just stop it from getting out of control. I'm just thankful that the Lord... <sighs> Preserved. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I could God just see that so thing good. flipping over. You know, even when I jumped out of the trailer at night in the dark into the middle of a um, rose bush. Oh, honey. Uh, <laughs> I've got stickers like all over my legs, my hands, like my, you know, <sighs> ankles. Um, you know, I'm just like, you know, God, you're good. You're using this. And I'm learning and growing. And I just have to trust that, you know, maybe. Joe would have had an accident if he was using right, it on his never hill know. or something, or, or maybe it would have, um, you know, had issues on the trailer, or maybe somebody would have rear, I don't know, whatever. And so I just, again, have to trust God to do the thing. Um, I think the hardest part, again, besides the trailer situation, is trying to figure out, do we try to make this a third time? Mm -hmm. So this is not the first time yeah. we've tried to get the backhoe. Yeah. So, um, I have, I mean, you know, I have plans on what we would do differently. My my father has a extremely beefy trailer that has a heavy tongue that would have no issues whatsoever, and it's plenty long. It's just but far do away. We'd do have that? to go get yeah, it. Yeah, we'd have to go an hour and a half one way, the wrong direction, and then go three hours the other way. Yeah. Um, to then go an hour and a half to unload, and then an hour and a half to give the trailer back and then an hour and a half back. <laughs> so stay tuned. We'll see. We'll keep you posted about what we decide to do. But God is good. God is That's good. the end of the story. That's right. And we will see you all soon. Bye.